Welcome back to Project 613. Today we learn two mitzvot. Number one, in continuation with the laws of Tamura, which we started learning yesterday, talking about exchanging one sacrifice for another. And yesterday we learned, for example, that if a person dedicated an animal as a sacrifice, he cannot then decide to change it for a different animal. Today's mitzvah is that even within sacrifices himself, once an animal is dedicated to be a certain type of sacrifice, that animal itself cannot be changed to be used for a different type of sacrifice. As we've learned previously, there are many different types of sacrifices. There is a peace offering, there is a guilt offering, and so on. And it would be forbidden to exchange an animal that has been designated for one to another. Maimonides teaches us an interesting reason for these mitzvahs, and that is that the Torah knows human nature. And by human nature, a person is very concerned about their possessions and about their money. And if the Torah would allow for a person to make an exchange, even if the Torah would only allow for an exchange from a more inferior animal to a better animal, a person may come along and convince himself or, conv or convince the temple treasury that really he is making a better exchange when in truth he knows that he's trying to keep the better one for himself. And this is why the Torah forbids any type of exchange whatsoever. And now we move on to a new topic. And over the next few weeks, we will be discussing the laws that govern ritual purity and impurity and how a person can contract ritual impurity and how a person is cleansed from it. The first mitzvah that we learn about is the laws governing what's known as Tumas Mes, which is the impurity that comes from a dead body. This is considered the most severe type of impurity, uh, being in contact with a dead body, and not only by touching a dead body, but even just by being under the same roof, one can, con can contract ritual impurity. And in the time that the temple stood, this was very significant because this would mean that a person wouldn't be able to enter the temple, wouldn't be able to eat from sacrificial meats. And although for the most part, these laws are not relevant in today's day and age, nevertheless, there are certain elements of these laws that are very much relevant, and we will be learning about them in the coming days. And most importantly, we believe that when Mashiach comes, these laws will return and all of the laws of ritual purity and ritual impurity will once again be practiced by all the Jewish people very soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.